It's not just the Republican Party that the Chamber of Commerce owns. The Chamber has also won 13 of the last 16 cases it's participated in before the Supreme Court. You could call it the corporate capture of the highest court in the land. And following President Obama's meeting last week with the top CEOs in our country, they may have a good chunk of the executive branch, too. But there's a larger issue here. The bigger picture is how the U.S. Chamber got this ability. And the, the, the way that they got this ability was in August, August 23rd, oh, it's over here now, August 23rd of 1971, a, 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 a judge by the name of Lewis Powell, or a lawyer at that time, wrote a memo to Eugene Sindor, Jr., who was the director, the executive director uh, of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, about how the chamber could influence. And in this memo, he had these bullet points, and each one was elaborated on. You can easily Google this thing. Just you know, Powell memo is all you have to do is plug into, into, into Google and you can read this thing. 1971, Lewis Powell was saying that there was a neglected opportunity in the courts. These are his words, quote, neglected opportunity in the courts. That there was an opportunity to be molding public opinion. That business had the opportunity to do this and wasn't aggressive enough in doing it. Influencing academia. Well, an entire little chapterlet about how to go after the schools and colleges how to influence course content and the selection of professors and tenure and the whole thing, how to influence textbooks so that they would tell a more conservative pro-business story of America, basically even rewriting American history. He talked about how law, lawmaking could be influenced through lobbying, that the Chamber of Commerce should be aggressively lobbying members of Congress. Up until that point, they hadn't been. In fact, business had basically taken a, a kind of back step. He, he, he talked about they could influence television and radio, the content of it. You know, how do we influence the, the, the variety shows? How do we get Ed Sullivan to, I mean, these are the details, but this was the implicit vision. How do you get the, the people to talk about the, how do you influence Walter Cronkite? And radio, of course. Books and other media. In fact, actually, he said books, magazines, paperback books and pamphlets. Books and other media. How do you influence those? through second party. He, he, he talked about the need to influence, quote, the neglected political arena. Right? In other words, step into politics. Maybe even float some candidates. This Lewis Powell memo of 1971 said, and here's Lewis Powell, political power is necessary, that such power must be assiduously cultivated, and that when necessary, it must be used aggressively and with determination. This was the beginning of the infrastructure of the modern conservative movement. Out of this came the modern conservative movement. And two years later, Richard Nixon appointed Lewis Powell to the U.S. Supreme Court, which leads us right to the Citizens United decision of January of this, of this last year, where the U.S. Supreme Court had the, the pinnacle, the top of Lewis Powell's, you know, the ultimate dream of Lewis Powell's, that corporations had rights under the Constitution just like people and could influence politics.